Hey, today I want to talk about story times because I get a lot of questions on why I do them. First of all, let's address a few rumors. No, I do not have any kids. No, I'm not married. And I just graduated high school, class of quarantine 2020. I love doing makeup and I love doing story times. So, why do I do story times? One, it gives the average person a voice. Some people just want others to know what they've gone through without actually knowing it's them. Some send me story times for advice and usually there's a bunch of comments making that person feel supported. Also to educate and allow people to be aware of certain situations. I think I speak on traumatic experiences that it's hard for victims to speak about on their own. And I've gotten a lot of DMs about how coming out made them accept whatever happened to them. And I also think it's a time where people can relate and say, yeah, that happened to me too. And in a way, it lets them know that they're not alone. And I always let you guys know, if you ever want to send me a story time, just DM me on Instagram. But yes, that's why I do them. This story time is from a follower, and she really needs advice. By the way, we're going to call her Jackie. So Jackie has been with her boyfriend, Aaron, for six years. She always thought that they were going to get married until he cheated on her with her sister. Now, it's been two years, and she got over the situation. And then she got an invitation in the mail from her sister for a wedding. She was, of course, happy that to know her sister was about to get married. When she read the name of the groom, it was her ex, Aaron. She was so upset about it, but the rest of her family says it's not that serious. She's debating on going to her own sister's wedding and don't know if she should say something. Comment down below and give this girl some advice. Story time on why my dad would never allow me and my sister inside of his basement. So growing up, my parents split and my sister and I would stay with my mom. During the summer, we'd go see our father. My dad was a mortician and he owned a funeral home. When he would do his work, he'd go to his basement and tell us to never go inside of it. At night, he liked his basement. I always assumed that he didn't want to go in down there in fear of us seeing dead bodies. One night, me and my sister was up. We couldn't sleep, so we started playing truth or dare. And my little sister dared me to go inside the basement. I didn't want to be a punk, so I did the dare. And I found the key to go to the basement. Before I get down there, I, of course, expected to see bodies. But when I was walking around, I didn't see any. But what was crazy was that it sounded like there were little girls crying. If you want to know what I saw, come back for part two. This is part two of why my dad would never allow me and my sister inside of his basement. So like I said, I went downstairs to the basement and I didn't see any bodies. Instead, I heard whimping and crying. So I went back upstairs and told my sister that there was nothing down there. She said that she wanted to see, so she came to the basement with me. When we were both walking around, she said that she heard the whimpering too. My sister had saw a door and it sounded like the noise was coming from behind the door. When we opened it, we saw girls chained up. If you are not a small business or do not know anyone that has a small business, just keep scrolling. So now that I have all my business owners here, I am doing a big small business free promo video. Meaning is that if there's some small businesses that need help with promotion, I will do it for completely free. So I'm talking about boutiques, hair, cups, whatever. And I'm gonna do the video on my channel. So if you wanna be a part of the free promo, let me know down below in the comments and tag your business or your business name, whatever. And here is my P.O. box. And I'm doing a video April 9th. So, if you're seeing this video before April 9th, get on to it. If you have extra questions, DM me on IG. Also, this video will be taken down April 10th, so get on it while you can. Help yourself or help a friend. This is part two of how my own best friend set me up. Trigger warning, sexual assault. So, like I said earlier, I got peer pressured into smoking Mary Jane. And I think it was laced. Throughout that time of being intoxicated, I didn't know what was really going on. And remember the guy I told you guys about, George? Well, he had his way with me and my friend. Aubrey knew about it, but didn't say anything. I didn't realize the severity of the situation and definitely didn't agree to anything that happened. 
as time went on, I started to gain my memory back on what was actually going on and started to understand. And I decided to tell my family. But nothing happened. It was almost like the person who did it to me got a slap on the wrist for what he did. This is why you should never have two best friends, but instead, one friend. Be careful of being the third will. When I was in high school, I had two best friends, Naomi and Cassandra. One Saturday night, we went to a party. When we went back home, we didn't have rides back home. Also, by the way, when we were in the party, Cassandra met this guy. When we stood outside the party looking for a way to get home, the guy Cassandra had talked to earlier had pulled up in his car. And he asked her if she needed a ride. She, of course, asked if he could take me and Naomi home. He said yes, but he only had room for one more person, and he told her to choose. And she chose Naomi. And in that moment, I really realized who were really the best friends. I asked him to please not leave me there alone. So Cassandra asked the guy if he could come back for me and pick me up. And being the good guy that he was, he said yes. But when they left, he never came back for me. The three best friend trio. Last year, I went on a girls trip with my friends. It was fun, but toward the end, we had to pack up and leave. So while all the girls were packing up, me and one of my other friends went downstairs to the front desk to give the key card. When we went down there, the lobby was packed with a bunch of girls, and I'm guessing it was for a ladies retreat. So the line was extremely long, and there was this really pretty lady that skipped the whole line, but no one noticed. So I assumed that she skipped because she was with the other girls in the retreat. She got her key card and got her room. Fast forward, after we give up our key cards to the front desk, we went back to our rooms to pack. 15 minutes later, we get a loud knock on the door, and it's the police. I opened the door, and he asked me and my friends, have we seen this girl anywhere? And it was a girl with a popsicle stick, and immediately I said no. One of my roommates said, oh, she's really pretty. And then I said, wait a minute, that was the same girl that had skipped the line. The police told us to stay in our room until further notice because that same girl went to her husband hotel. She cut off his pee-pee, then pushed his mistress over the balcony. And now she's running through the hotel. Story time on why I tried to run over my science teacher because he was a pervert. So back in 2015, I went to a university, which I'm not going to say the name of because I don't want them to know that I'm talking about them. And I majored in nursing. And usually when you major in that type of field, you usually get a lot of like science classes. So my first year I took chemistry, which all the students have to do for their first year. It was a requirement. And my science teacher, we're going to call him Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson was like, like in his 40s, middle age. He had a wife and two sons. I know this because he plastered them all over the damn desk. His class was hard, but he was a really nice teacher. And whenever I needed any help, I could email him. I could come to his classroom after school hours. This went on for the whole year. So one day, I leave his class really late. He offers me a ride back home to my apartment, and of course I said yes. This is when it gets us come back for part two. This is part two of why I tried to run over my science teacher because he was a pervert. So, like I said earlier, I left his class late. It was really dark, and he asked if I needed a ride home to my apartment. And you know, of course, I said yes, because I thought it might be safer for me to get a ride from him than for me to be walking late in the dark at night. So, I give him directions on where to go. He asked me questions about things outside of school, and I thought it was nice because it seemed like he genuinely cared. Halfway there, he tells me that he's hungry, and if I minded if he parked to the side so he could order food for his house. He ordered his food and then just sat there. And I was like, so are we going to go? Then literally, I don't know where this man starts bawling. I felt awkward, but I asked him what was wrong. He starts talking about his family and his wife and divorce. Thought it was weird, but you know, I tried to console him. Then he looks at me, starts rubbing my knees and says, this is why I adore you. It gets crazier. I'm running out of time. This is part three of why I tried to run over my science teacher because he was a pervert. If you didn't watch part one and part two, go ahead and watch it because I'm about to just go straight in. So he grabs my face and literally, literally tries to kiss me. I was like, what the heck are you doing? He was like, come on now. I know why you came. In my head, I'm like, hmm. And he's like, look, just do me this one favor and I give you an A in my class. And I was like, nope, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And he yanks me back closer to him. And guys, I don't know what it is, but I got this like body trigger. Like the moment someone touches me, I'm throwing hands. And I'm messing up Mr. Jackson so bad that he had to hop out of his car. And at that moment, I just saw red. When he got out, I closed and locked his doors. 
he was yelling at me to get out by the way guys i cannot drive but that day i just decided to drive and i swerve almost crashing the car trying to run over him he runs off and runs into the bushes somewhere from there i hopped out and